Hello, everyone, and welcome to our channel. Today, we have an incredible story to share about Ukraine's Neptune anti-ship missile and how it's not only capable of taking down ships, but can also destroy the formidable S-400 air defense system. The Neptune missile gained fame last year when Ukraine launched two of these missiles from land, hitting the flagship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, the Moscow, in the dead of night. The Moscow, equipped with various anti-aircraft radars and defenses, was left defenseless. This incident not only raised questions about the quality of Russian weaponry, but also showcased the true power of Ukraine's domestically developed Neptune missile. Originally designed as an anti-ship missile, the Neptune has recently been upgraded to target land-based objectives. And its first target? None other than Russia's most advanced air defense system, the S-400. In mid-August, videos surfaced online showing Ukraine using Neptune anti-ship missiles to destroy the Russian S-400 system. The S-400 missiles were obliterated, leaving nothing but wreckage. It's worth noting that the S-400 was deployed near a Russian military base, originally tasked with providing air defense protection but ended up becoming a target. The news of Neptune missiles taking down the S-400 has been confirmed by multiple sources. Recently, an article on a U.S. military website quoted Ukrainian defense officials stating that on August 23rd, a modified Neptune missile officially launched from Kiev hit the S-400 air defense system on the western part of the Crimean Peninsula. They also mentioned plans to use the Neptune to target Moscow and other Russian locations in the future. Just a few days before this statement, a Russian official mentioned that a new Ukrainian missile had hit the S-400 system, but the exact weapon used was not specified. Now, the truth is out. The Neptune missile, developed by Ukraine, has proven its capability to take down the S-400 air defense system. The Neptune is a subsonic cruise missile with a top speed of no more than Mach 1. Despite its subsonic nature, it managed to destroy the advanced S-400, challenging the exaggerated claims about the S-400's invincibility. The S-400 is touted as one of the world's most advanced air defense missiles, with a range of up to 400 kilometers and the ability to launch 96 missiles at once while intercepting 48 targets. It can fire various types of missiles, covering a wide range of altitudes and distances. Now, let's reflect on some Chinese assessments of the S-400. For instance, a People's Daily article titled Russian S-400 Air Defense Missile Surpasses U.S. Patriot claimed it's the best air defense system today. Looking back at that article now, it's hard not to chuckle. Russia boasts the hypersonic weapon dagger, with terminal speeds exceeding 10 Machs. They also launched nine hypersonic missiles to target the American Patriot system during a conflict but all were intercepted. Some Russian and Chinese weapons, while impressive on paper, seemed to falter when put to the test on the battlefield. Returning to the Neptune's success against the S-400, a likely explanation could be that the S-400's radar may have had difficulty detecting low-flying targets like the Neptune. The Neptune, designed for sea skimming flight at altitudes of 10 to 20 meters above the sea surface, approached the Russian military assets virtually undetected. That's why when the Moscow was hit last year, it didn't even launch a single anti-aircraft missile in response. Russia radars have significant shortcomings in detecting sea skimming and low-flying targets. This has been a persistent problem with Soviet equipment. On paper, the performance of Soviet weapons may appear impressive, but many crucial details often fall short. For instance, their radar systems, which claim long detection ranges, often lack precision and the ability to effectively detect low-flying targets. To illustrate this point, let's take the example of tanks. When Sweden purchased tanks in the 1990s, they invited various countries to send their main battle tanks for evaluation, including Russia's T-80. This tank, like the American M1 Abrams, had a gas turbine engine, providing it with ample power and speed. Swedish evaluations acknowledged that the tank had impressive power and speed, but it had several shortcomings. It had poor reverse speed due to Russia's transmission technology. The tank's reverse speed was extremely slow, and the driver's visibility was limited. Furthermore, the tank had inadequate night vision capabilities and failed testing due to malfunctioning night vision equipment. 
So, while the T-80 had many impressive qualities on paper, crucial details like driver visibility, reverse speed, and night vision capabilities were bad. These details are often critically important in combat. Now, let's look at Ukraine's Neptune missile. Last year, Neptune made headlines by sinking the Moscow, and this year, it took down the S-400 air defense system. It transitioned from being an anti-ship missile to a ground attack version, which required upgrades, primarily the addition of terrain matching systems. When a missile flies over the sea, the terrain remains relatively consistent with minimal altitude changes. But when it flies over land, the landscape can vary significantly with mountains, water, and valleys, causing frequent altitude changes. Therefore, the missile needs the capability to recognize the current terrain and adjust its flight altitude accordingly. Converting an anti-ship missile into a ground attack version is not inherently difficult and has been done before. Take Japan's Type 12 anti-ship missile, for example. It has the ability to attack land targets despite being primarily an anti-ship missile. Japan had the terrain matching system when developing the Type 12 anti-ship missile, which effectively makes it a cruise missile. However, due to Japan's constitutional limitations on offensive weapons, they downplayed its ground attack capabilities. Looking at the example of the Japanese Type 12 missile, modifying an anti-ship missile into a land attack version isn't a complex task. Ukraine achieved this within a year. Ukraine's improvements to the Neptune missile likely involve the installation of terrain matching systems and an increase in range. Recently, President Zelensky mentioned that Ukraine's new missile has a range of 700 kilometers and will target the Russian heartland. Ukrainian defense officials have also indicated that the upgraded Neptune can target cities like Moscow. Considering the distance from Ukraine to Moscow is about 500 kilometers, this suggests that the ground attack version of the Neptune missile likely has a range exceeding 500 kilometers. The previous anti-ship version had a range of just under 300 kilometers. In summary, Ukraine added terrain matching systems to the Neptune missile, allowing it to attack land targets and significantly extended its range. Given the S-400 air defense system was successfully targeted, it indicates that Russian radar has significant limitations in detecting low-flying targets. The S-400 is Russia's most advanced weapon system and couldn't stop the Neptune in Crimea or Moscow. In the coming months, if Ukraine can mass-produce Neptune missiles, they could pose a devastating threat to Russia's heartland. We've seen Ukraine launch numerous drone attacks on Russian military bases and the capital, Moscow, in recent months. In the future, Ukraine might move beyond drones to launch a significant number of cruise missiles on Moscow. As the saying goes, what goes around comes around. The missiles Russia used to strike Kiev, Ukrainians will eventually use against you. The fact that Russia's most advanced air defense system, the S-400, was taken down by a subsonic cruise missile like the Neptune should make two countries nervous, Turkey and China. Turkey's insistence on purchasing the Russian S-400 system led to its removal from the F-35 program by the United States. Not only did they miss out on the most advanced fighter jets, but even upgrades to their existing F-16s were halted. Turkey's acquisition of the S-400, which couldn't intercept even a subsonic cruise missile like the Neptune, likely has Turkish officials regretting their decision. China, on the other hand, spent billions buying six S-400 missile regiments. China heavily relies on Russian air defense systems, having imported 24 regiments of S-300 air defense missiles since the 1990s, which became the backbone of its air defense. In 2014, China spent $3 billion to acquire six S-400 air defense missile regiments. After spending so much money and discovering that these weapons couldn't even intercept a subsonic cruise missile like the Neptune, China may be reevaluating its air defense strategy. The S-400 is considered one of Russia's most advanced weapons, yet it couldn't intercept the Neptune, which is not a supersonic missile. If the S-400 can't stop the Neptune, it's unlikely to effectively intercept Taiwan's cruise missiles, which are technologically superior to the Neptune. Taiwan has already mass-produced supersonic and hypersonic cruise missiles like the Sungfong-2 and Sungfong-3, as well as medium-range ground-attack missiles like the Yunfong. 
These missiles are technologically advanced, and if the S-400 couldn't intercept a subsonic Neptune, it would likely struggle to intercept Taiwan's missiles. If you enjoyed this video and found it informative, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our future content. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next video.